This is your WAUK Daily News Roundup for the Shaw, 101.1 FM and 540 AM in Waukesha. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Milwaukee's Alverno College is laying off 37 employees and cutting some undergraduate majors and graduate programs. Alverno leaders say the moves are necessary for the college to survive. 25 graduate students will have to finish their master's degrees somewhere else. The U.S. Secret Service could release its final security zone for the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee any day now. Like a lot of Republicans, Senator Ron Johnson wants the protest zone moved farther from Pfizer Forum. The plan has to be changed. I, I'd like to see uh, Mayor Johnson step up the plate and demand change as well. Again, this is in all of our best interests. Governor Evers ought to be demanding change as well as, uh, you know, obviously, the Republican Party is, is, you know, we're asking for this concern to be addressed. Johnson on WISN-TV's up front. The state Supreme Court is expected to issue a ruling soon about ballot drop boxes. University of Wisconsin political scientist Barry Burden. The Supreme Court has considered a new case that would allow them again, and there is a new liberal majority that seems more inclined to permit those again as they were used in 2020. Last week, justices gave local clerks flexibility about locating absentee polling places, but kept a ban on early voting vehicles in place. The state of Wisconsin recovered about $33 million in fraudulent unemployment claims last year. The Department of Workforce Development says it looked into more than 2,300 identity theft cases and did almost 2,000 worker misclassification tax audits. DWD officials say they're intensifying their efforts to fight unemployment insurance fraud. Scam artists are calling business owners in Wisconsin pretending to be from the Public Service Commission. The PSC's 800 number even shows up on your caller ID when they call, but it's a scam. Consumer protection professionals say the PSC is a regulatory agency, not a utility company, and they don't call businesses demanding payments. The world's largest tubing festival was held over the weekend in Wisconsin. The Fat Far in Chippewa Falls celebrated 35 years this year. Thousands of people take their tubes, kayaks, and canoes down the Chippewa River every Father's Day. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WAUK News, I'm Stuart J. Waddles. A two-year-old boy died after being hit by a car in McGovern Park in Milwaukee last night. According to witnesses, the driver in a white truck was speeding through the parking lot when the collision occurred, resulting in the boy's death. Reports indicate the driver remained at the scene following the incident. There's no word yet about possible criminal charges. A small plane crashed in a field near the Sheboygan Airport yesterday afternoon. Everyone on board was able to walk away. The sheriff's office said it happened just after 2 p.m. with the plane unable to reach the runway. Three people were on board at the time of the crash. Deputies say none of them sustained injuries. The FAA and NTSB are now investigating the cause of the incident. In the face of financial troubles, Alverno College has made the decision to slash a significant portion of its academic offerings. The Board of Trustees revealed Friday that the institution plans to eliminate one-third of its undergraduate majors, including English, history, and math. A quarter of the graduate programs at the Catholic College in Milwaukee will also be discontinued. The senator wants the mayor and governor to get involved with RNC planning. Senator Ron Johnson wants Milwaukee Mayor Cavalier Johnson and Governor Tony Evers to demand the relocation of the protest zone for the upcoming Republican National Convention next month. On WISN 12's up front, Johnson voiced concern that the current protest area's close proximity to the RNC site could potentially lead to unnecessary conflicts. Johnson says moving the protest zone further away from the convention venue would be in the interest of the mayor. There's a place where orange barrels are going away. The Waukesha County Department of Public Works and local drivers are celebrating the completion of work on Moreland between Beloit Road and National Avenue. The mile-and-a-half improvements include bigger turn lanes, sewer upgrades, and better sidewalks. Over the next few years, DPW will be completing the remaining Moreland Road work. And that's what you need to know. I'm Stuart J. Waddles, WAUK News. Brewers head west. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Brewers open a series against the Angels in Anaheim tonight. On Thursday, they play the Padres. Seven games in seven days. Center fielder Blake Perkins. Yeah, very busy road trip. Um, I mean, I feel like we got 10, 12 guys who are from California, so it's going to be a lot of family and friends, so I guess trying to have to balance that with winning every day. Um, 
But it'll be interesting, right? We haven't we haven't played any. Uh, well, we've only played the Mariners, right? So um, it'll be good. Good weather, uh, and we're gonna look to come out every day and win that day. So tomorrow, win tomorrow. Perkins with a spectacular throw from center to home plate to end yesterday with a five to four win over the Reds. Manager Pat Murphy. We're not great. But that's the way you play championship ball. You know what I mean? We got thrown out the first stolen base. What did we do? You know, Q kept them going. You know what I mean? We kept running. And that's just kind of like an attitude. NBA Finals Game 5 tonight in Boston. The Celtics up three games to one after losing by 38 points Friday in Dallas. Drew Holiday. I think it's a little bit of everything. I think it's tactical. I think it's mental. Um, again, I do think it's uh, being a more tested team, but I think it's about locking in. Um, I think we will make adjustments out here today and then uh, obviously do the best we can to mentally prepare for another battle in, in Game 5. That's the Celtics' Drew Holiday. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Miles Teller has racked up some pretty respectable credits during his career. He is about to add an officer and a gentleman to that list as he will join the cast of the remake of the 1982 film. Teller will play the lead character, Zach Mayo, originally played by Richard Gere in the original film. Teller's credits include Whiplash, Top Gun Maverick, and more recently, The Offer, a series that explores how TV producer Al Ruddy muscled through the studio system to get The Godfather made. A documentary about Amazon workers trying to unionize will be released this coming fall. The film focuses on workers turned organizers who had no big backing and ended up doing the unthinkable, unionizing an Amazon workplace in Staten Island. The film has enjoyed a successful festival run, including at Sundance this past January, where it brought home a special jury award for Art of Change. The film will hit theaters October 18th. It has not yet found a streaming home, but if I'm a betting man, it won't be on Amazon Prime. Apple TV did not censor Jon Stewart, so says Jon Stewart. On a recent episode of the Town Podcast, Stewart discussed his exit from the show, The Problem with Jon Stewart, after two seasons. Stewart said, when you work for a major corporation, there is no real free speech. You get to do what you want until they think it's going to hurt their beer sales. Stewart is still on TV, however, guest hosting The Daily Show one day a week until the fall election. Luckily for him, The Daily Show viewers are not beer drinkers. The second half of the third season of Bridgerton just dropped on Netflix. The hosts of The View had fun discussing a steamy six-minute sex scene from a recent episode, prompting Joy Behar to refer to her fellow co-hosts as one horny panel. Co-host Sandra Haynes said, The scene had a physical effect on her, adding, It takes me places just watching it. I can't be alone. Can't be alone for six minutes during an R-rated sex scene? That could have been an entry in my high school diary. (laughs) If I had kept the high school diary. There will be a Practical Magic Part 2, according to the New York Post. The tabloid has Nicole Kidman on record saying she and Sandra Bullock are both returning for the sequel. The two actresses will revise their roles as Jillian and Sally Owens, two sisters who are witches and try to lift a curse that prevents them from finding love. The first film was released in 1998 and based on the 1995 book of the same name by Alice Hoffman. Oscar-winning writer Akiva Goldsman will write the script. There was a notable brat missing from Bratz, the new documentary by Andrew McCarthy. The phrase Brat Pack describes a group of actors from the 80s, which included Rob Lowe, Emilio Estevez, Demi Moore, Ali Sheedy, and Molly Ringwald. McCarthy recently addressed Ringwald's absence from the film, saying that when he contacted her, she said she'd just like to keep looking forward. It was later revealed she would have loved to take part in the project, but saw a script titled Bratz and thought the documentary was about bratwursts and was too embarrassed to say anything after the fact. For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media radio network with your forecast i'm Corey hartman for today sunshine 88 are high slight chance of an afternoon storm partly cloudy 72 tonight mostly sunny to the mid 80s on your tuesday wednesday sunshine with a high near 86 again an afternoon storm for thursday mostly sunny and 81 currently 75 degrees that's your wauk daily news roundup from civic media Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at wauk.radio.com.